Hello everyone. As you remember, we were working on a 2006 Suzuki Forenza. We had a transmission rage sensor issue. Now in this video, we're going to be asking a few questions. And some of these questions are, why does a P0705, which is a transmission range sensor malfunction code set? When does the MIL malfunction indicator lamp, also known as a service engine soon lamp, turn off? Now once the condition is cleared, or when we fix the problem, how long does this code stay in memory when we, without using a scanner? Another thing we want to know is how does the TCM, Transmission Control Module, know when there is a problem in the range sensor circuit? And a couple of other things we're going to do is we're going to investigate the wiring diagrams to understand how the circuit works, and we also, from understanding that, we're going to develop diagnostic strategies to test the system before replacing parts. Let's take a look at the circuit description for this transmission range sensor. Now, the range sensor switch is located on the selector shaft. Now, this shaft is going inside the transmission where the outside of the uh, shaft is spline, which also is where the TR switch is located on. Now, of course, the inside of this here uh, TR switch is spline. It has a flat spot to locate it. Now, inside this uh, switch, range switch, there are four switches, which will give a unique combination of voltages. That's B plus voltage and zero volts. And with using this different unique combination of uh, voltages and zero volts, I should say, we are sending this here encoded values of voltage to the TCM along four lines. Now the TCM knows what this here voltages should be in each particular gear. And if it sees something that it knows is different from what it's expecting, automatically you're going to get a code. All right. Now the way this thing will work is when you put your move your gear sh uh, shift selector uh, there is a cable that's connected to it, which is in turn connected to the shaft on the transmission. Now the, trans the shaft is turning, which in turn is turning the transmission rain sensor uh, switches and putting these switches into a unique combination for each one of these here gears, which is the PRN D321. Now, there's also, there's two other switches inside this, uh, this transmission range switch. There's also a switch in here for the starter interlock. So, in other words, you cannot start the car unless it's in park or if it's in neutral. There's also another switch in there that when you put your car into reverse, then this here switch will close and it will light up your reverse lights. Now also at the same time, these four switches, the ones that's used for the gear selection, is also being fed to the instrument cluster so that you will know which gear you're in. There's an LCD up in the instrument cluster and it will light up as PRN D321 when you're in any one of these gears. Now what will set this here diagnostic trouble code? If you have a switch, one of these here four switches that's stuck closed when it should be in an open position for a particular gear, or if you have a one of these lines that's shorted to ground, in other words, it's pulling it to zero volts there again, it should be 12 volts, let's say, or if you're shorted to power, now power is not a good word. Power is voltage times current. Now, really what we're talking about when they say power, we're talking about plus 12 volts, B plus voltage. Now, if you get any one of these uh, three conditions here, automatically you have set a code. Now, here comes what's, what is the computer going to do when it sets this code? Well, right off the bat, we're going to set the malfunction indicator lamp. We're going to turn it on. Now, also, the TCM will record operating conditions at the time the diagnostic fails. Basically what that's saying is it's going to go out there, it's going to look at some of the inputs, some of the sensors, some of the values that they're uh, registering at this time. This code pops up and it's going to store it in memory. And, it's, and here it's saying it's stored it in the 
failure records buffer. Basically, that's a freeze fr uh, frame data. Now, here's the most important part. Once this thing gets this code set, then this here uh, transmission is going to go into what's called a limp mode. It's an emergency substitute mode. Back, basically, what's happening is that the computer is going to fall to a backup program, ignoring a lot of these sensors out there that the transmission needs, and it's going to just put your transmission in a fourth gear. And it's going to stay in fourth gear. In other words, when you go to drive, you should be starting off in first gear, then second, then third, then fourth. But in this case, you're going to be starting off in fourth gear. And as you know, when you start in a high gear like this, your car is not going to have any power at all. Okay, so what is it going to take to clear this code out of this thing? We want this check engine light to be off. Well, you're going to have to fix the problem. You've got to find out why it's uh, doing what it's doing. But we're going to follow that up later on. But here's what it's going to take to clear this here check engine light. Even when you have the problem fixed, the mill will not turn off until we have had three ignition cycles. Okay, so we fixed the problem. Okay, is the light going out? No. Turn the switch on. Is it going out? No. Third time. Now, it sees after three ignition cycles, everything looks good. Now, the computer is going to turn off the check engine light. Now, here comes another one. The code is still set in history. But remember, after three ignition cycles, if everything is good, the mill is going to be turned off. But we're still going to have a history of this code. And it will not clear out until we have 40 consecutive warm-up cycles. That means you have cranked up your car 40 times and it's warmed up and it has not seen a fault. And then at this point, the computer is going to clear this history code right on out. Now, if you have a scanner, you can go ahead and clear the history uh, this code out. But without a scanner, it's going to take 40 consecutive warm-up cycles, you know, for this here to get cleared out. Okay, let's take a look at this here wiring diagrams. This is uh, two diagrams of the t uh, TCM. It's showing some inputs going into it. Uh, we got outputs. We got solenoid valves. It's inside the transmission. And we're not going to talk a whole lot about the other sensors here, but we want to focus in on the right hand side here which is the transaxle range sensor now if you look at this here switch you can see there's four switches all right now the switches are being fed by a b plus voltage that is going up to a fuse 10 amp fuse this uh, device id is f2 now you notice that this here voltage is hot in run and in start. It's a pink wire that's feeding this here, these four switches. Now what they decided to do here, as you can see they've labeled the switches L1, L2, L3, and L4. Now you can see the pinouts here on this here switch. Uh, it's coming in with a pink wire. That's from the B+, plus, as we already mentioned. It's coming in on pin 1. Now on L1 we have 3, pin 3. L2 is 2, L3 is 4, and L4 is 5. And you can also see the color of the wires that's coming off from the switches being fed to the TCM. We have a dark blue with a red tracer on L1. L2 is a light green with a red tracer. L3 is a red wire with a dark blue tracer. And L4 is a light green wire with a black tracer. Now, if you look on down there, you see at the TCM at C1, B15, B6, and B11. There are three connectors going to this TCM. They're labeled A, B, and C. So it looks like we're going to be on two connectors, C and on B. Now all we need is the unique combination of 12 volts and 0 volts that the TCM is looking at for each particular gear. Now I have another wiring diagram up here. If you remember early on, I said that these four signals are also fed to the cluster feeding a LCD screen so that we would know which gear we're in. So let's get to this here table that's over here on the right. If you will look at this table, look at the P 
Now P is for park, and if you go across horizontally, you see that zero is under L1, zero is under L2, 12, which is 12 volts, or B plus volts is L3, and zero is L4. Now these are the voltages that the TCM is expecting when you're in the park position. Now let's look at L1. This switch, which says zero, is zero volts. Now that means that for the TCM at connector point C1, that means it wants zero volts on that L1 position for that L1 switch. That means that L1 switch has to be open. Now look at L2. Again, is zero. That means that L2 switch has to be open and at B15 it has to be zero volts there. Now at L3 switch it has 12, 12 volts. That means that L3 switch has to be closed to get 12 volts down to B6 connector on TCM or B6 uh, point there. Now L4 is zero and again zero means that the switch has to be open for it to have zero volts down on the connector B at position 11. Now that we understand how the signal chart works, we have enough information now that we can come up with a diagnostic um, method here of how we can check this out. Now we could uh, look at, we have to look at all four of these here voltages, okay, in a particular gear. For example, let's say we're in park. Now we could go to the uh, to the transmission range sensor and we could stab each one of these here pins, pin numbers three, two, four, five. However, the connector is very small. This thing is probably, oh, maybe half inch wide by maybe three quarter inch wide. So to get four T pins in there at one time, it's going to be pretty tight and in this possibility that they could short to each other. Now we could take a T-pin and we could put in one at a time, move it, put another one in, move it, I mean, you know, moving that one pin each time. But I want to be a little bit faster than that. So here's what I'm thinking. We can go to the TCM. It's right up under the dash. It's not that big a deal to get to. We could drop it down. We can stab four pins in here at one time. And the way these connectors are on here, if you remember is A, B, and C, we're going to be on C connector and B connector. They'll be spaced out far enough that we can look at all four signals at one time. Now, if you have a voltmeter, you can, you'll have to take and put, the, uh, put your voltmeter on each one of the um, pins, and then you'll have to record the voltage, and then you compare it to the chart and make sure that it looks okay. Now, what you'll do is you'll have the switch in the on position don't even need the car to be running. So in this case you want to uh, turn the switch to on and you'll take your voltmeter with your four pins stabbed at the four points there on the TCM as indicated on the drawing, the wiring diagram, and you're going to go and you're looking for zero volts on, on L1, zero on L2, 12 volts on L3, and zero volts on L4. Now I have a four channel scope. So I'm going to use my scope here, and I'm going to look at all four channels in one shot. And I'm going to put enough records uh, time on the screen. So I'm going to look at maybe three seconds on the screen. Uh, I mean, three seconds for each shift. So I'll go down to P, R, N, D, three, two, one, and then I'll go back up. And so I'll have enough uh, time on the screen that I can see where each one of the transitions are. Because you want to look at every one of these single, every, every one of these gears to make sure that this chart is going to be correct for each one of the gears. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention is another advantage to measuring these uh, voltages directly at the TCM is that that's actually what is being measured by the TCM. I mean, what would happen if we measure up here at the range switch if we could get there and everything looked good? Do we know that the TCM is everything is good there? No, we don't. But if we go to the TCM, we'll know for sure to see exactly what the TCM is measuring. And that's what we want to know for sure. And that way we can check all of the wires from the switches, L1, L2, L3, L4, 
all the way to the TCM to be sure that those wires, there's no corrosion on it. So we've eliminated that by going to the TCM also. Okay, so now that we know that, let's take a look at our connector views here a little bit so we can see what we'll be getting in on that. Now, as you can see, we have various connectors here. Uh, the ones that we're going to be looking at, or maybe they say of concern, would be the transmission range switch, which in this case on the diagram is labeled as PNP switch. I went ahead and drawed the wires on there so you can see actually on the connector for the rain switch about where you know they will be uh, you know for the pins but as you can look at this you can see as I mentioned that these pins would be uh, the T pins will be very close together so what we're going to be focusing on is the connector up there in the top right corner which is the TCM connectors as I mentioned there's three connectors and you can see there are 16 pins on each connector labeled A, B, and C. Now where we're going to be stabbing our T pins at is going to be at C1, B15, B6, and B11. Well that's going to conclude this here video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to put it together for you. I hope you learned something from it. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be out there on the car. We're going to do our diagnostics. Now the school work is over. So uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe. Leave your comments. Uh, let me know what you think. You guys take care.